there, I am the archivist Sherry Heiberg and welcome to another edition of Loremaker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, for those who don't know, Loremaker's Guide to the Galaxy is a program that the other writers and I do every couple weeks or so to take you on a journey throughout the lore and history of the star systems we have made for you, the players. Uh, now that we have gotten that exciting introduction out of the way, let's explore one of the cooler star systems, the Great Centauri Republic. All right, found it. Let's go this way. All right, so here we have the Centauri star system. It is a member of the UEE. It is not an independent republic, despite what I may have just said. This right here is the star. It's uh, an A-type main sequence star. Uh, main sequence meaning that it burns hydrogen. It uh, is a very young star. It's about, uh, let me just double check here. It is around 280 million years old because A type stars are generally short lived, around, you know, 300 something, like between 300 and 400 million years old is the average that we've found so far. They burn blue white to the apparent eye. So they're very pretty, they're very massive. Um, a couple of times more massive than our sun, and they are, I think I already said they were very pretty, but they are very pretty. <laughs> but well, one in 160 stars are A-type, about 0.625%, um, and eventually they will cool to a red giant. Uh, this star is a little bit over middle-aged. It will one day, like I said, it will one day become a red giant, but that won't be for most likely another 100 million years. And as the scope of human civilization is fairly small, we have plenty of time to exist in a long and fruitful life around this lovely blue-white star. Oh, uh, this is Centauri 1. It is a protoplanet, meaning it's you know a little small rock, lots of rocks on it, doesn't have much a core to speak of. Um, one day we'd really like to get the images in the game, I mean in the star, in the star map to more reflect uh, some of the misshapen protoplanets that you see, like uh, Ceres, Pallas, the other protoplanet asteroids that are in our system. But for now we have this little round moon looking thing. Centauri 1, oops, sorry about that. Centauri 1 is particularly famous because it was one of the first images captured of the system a uh, photographer who was also a surveyor named Kelly Alden was able to capture an image of Centauri 1 against the sun here. And uh, in the image, the corona of the sun is reaching out as if to embrace the planet. It's uh, one of the more famous images from the Centauri system. You can get it on postcards. Um, Kelly Alden didn't ever really make a lot of money off of it. She took it in conjunction with a survey, so it belonged to the company that she took the photo of. But she did take many more throughout her lifetime and died as a surveyor at a ripe old age. So now that we've gone over Centauri 1, let's see if we can find Centauri 2, also known as Yar. It's probably on the other side of the sun here. Oh no, there it is. Hi. All right, so Yar is an inhabited planet. It was terraformed, but it's uh, not really very highly populated. It's kind of abandoned. There was a uh, mining boom that took place over a very short period of time, you know, roughly 100 years or so. So there wasn't much time for a, a big civilization to develop. It's sort of like, uh, it's sort of modeled after the idea of Old West mining towns that are still around that were built very quickly in order to take advantage of things like gold, silver, and copper in the mountains, and then just as quickly died off and were completely abandoned. Yar is covered in structures like this. Uh, it's kind of a dusty, deserty world. Some of the terraforming is more or less being undone in that one of the deserts, the uh, red desert, is taking over the planet at large. It's a very slow process. People still live there, just not very many. It has to rely pretty heavily on trade in order to get by. Um, and those who've been with us for a long time may remember it from the first three chapters of Cassandra's Tears. It was a setting there. 
So it's it's a little bit sad, you know. You know, kind of like uh, how Planet Asura is more or less based on Detroit. This is more or less kind of an old west sort of planet. Now let's move on to the next planet in the system, which I know is a favorite of many people, including me. Uh, Saisei. Saisei was created as kind of a love letter to a lot of our Japanese backers that we had in the early days. Uh, Saisei uh, was named by, I believe, Rob Irving. It, the kanji that we have picked to represent it, uh, Saisei, is a festival planet. It follows the Japanese naming conventions of planets in our solar system, like Kinsei is Venus, meaning gold planet. Kase is Mars, meaning fire planet. And now we have Saisei here, meaning a festival planet. So it was meant from the beginning to be a good, happy place for people to go. It is richly terraformed. It's famously beautiful. It was designed from the ground up to be a planet where people could live in harmony with nature. So any pollution on the planet is extraordinarily low. Very beautifully climate balanced. It's lush. Uh, the Asiatic architecture is very famous. The concept art for this planet is completely gorgeous, and uh, I can't wait for you guys to see it when it's finally built in the game. Uh, another cool thing about the word Saise is that it's sort of a homonym for rebirth, which is a very important concept for the people here, as the planet and a lot of the system were taken by the Tevarin or the Tevarin in the first uh, Tevarin War which took place uh, between the years of 2541 and 2546. And parts of the planet were destroyed, you know, historical buildings, places like uh, nature places that people had very carefully built in the terraforming process were destroyed. But uh, the planet survived after the Tevarin were driven out and it is in the minds of the locals better than ever. The landing zone is called Hujin City or Hujin City and that's named after the Shinto god of wind. It is also almost a homonym for Hujin, which means wife, so wife city, but not really. <laughs> All right, let's uh, move on here. We're gonna go to Centauri 4. Centauri 4. Centauri 4 is a coreless planet. Uh, it doesn't mean that, that it's hollow, it just means that the layers inside it never differentiated. So it's kind of a, an amalgamation of rocks of all different types, and there's no like band of liquid metal or like a metal core. It's just all an amalgamation of rocks, more or less. <laughs> and as such, it doesn't have a magnetic ma 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 and as such, it doesn't have a magnetic field, which means it's a very poor candidate for terraforming. Of course, it's. Looks like it's barely on the edge of the green zone there, but I don't think it's ever going to get terraformed. No one is. No one's really sure about how to, you know, build a core on a planet and kickstart an entire magnetic field. That's a pretty, pretty complicated phenomenon and may account for the slowness of Synth World. Um, and while we're here on Centauri Four, we actually have a pretty good view of the asteroid belt. Um, the asteroid belt, unlike a lot of belts that we've mentioned so far, is an active mining location. It's very rich in resources and minerals. Uh, it's a great place to go if you want to start up a mining operation, but of course you'll have to compete with all the other established businesses there. At least that's the goal that we have in mind for this system. It's a little bit denser than a lot of other asteroid belts in that it has enough mass to form a planet but never got around to doing it. So that's part of what makes it such an ideal mining prospect, is that there's just so much there. All right, and we have one more planet to go over, Centauri 5, a super Jupiter type gas giant, which means that it is a lot more massive than the planet Jupiter. It's an interesting category, very human centric, super Jupiter because it's bigger than Jupiter. You know, it's just what we have to work with. <laughs> One of the interesting things about A-type stars is that they, uh, as far as we can tell so far from uh, our observations with Kepler and the like, is that A-type stars tend to attract gas giants. This could be because it's hard for us to see whether or not there are any terrestrial planets, but so far most A-type stars have primarily gas giants uh, circling them. Uh, Centauri 5, like a lot of the other gas giants that we've come across, is a good place to get hydrogen. It does not have any 
you know, it doesn't have an oxygen nitrogen mix in the atmosphere like Crusader, which is the only gas giant we've found so far with naturally breathable atmosphere. So there's a very low chance that platform based colonization will ever take place on this planet. And, uh, well, we've already gotten to the end of this wonderful journey into the great Centauri star system. Uh, I hope you liked hearing about some of the history and lore behind this, this system. We put a lot of thought into it. Uh, we especially worked hard to find a good name for Saise to, to find something that made sense, to find something that made sense to people. Um, Look at this little planet. Let's just go back to it. It's just good. Just a good planet. Just a good little, little planet. Anyway, thanks a lot, as always, um, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. So if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.